a lot of times it's just the brands be trying to hold us back from our coins that we deserve. This industry is so, so new. It's gonna take some time. The legal industry is so far behind shot. I don't even know if they know who TikTok is. Hey y'all, it's Cameron with a K. I come to you guys with a new video. So as you can tell by the title, today's tea is hot, okay? I'm going to be spilling the tea on my 2022 predictions for where the influencer marketing industry is going. Y'all, I'm so excited about this video. If you don't know, I'm an attorney, content creator, YouTuber, and entrepreneur. I help other creators, influencers, and entrepreneurs navigate the contracts in the influencer marketing industry. I like to call myself a lawyer influencer because not only am I a lawyer attorney, I am licensed. Okay, put some respect on my name. Um, but I'm also an influencer and a creator. So I'm literally right there with you going through the struggles, dealing with brands, all the things that we have to deal with in navigating this industry, but definitely with the pros that come along with it as well. So I'm excited to talk about where I think the industry is going as we head into 2022. Fingers crossed, more legal talk more contract information because I hate to see my fellow creators taken advantage of, okay? But let's get into today's legal tea, child. Let, Cause it's hot, okay? <laughs> okay, y'all, so I have about 10 projections I have for where the influencer marketing industry is going in 2022. I'm excited, so let's just hop into it. I will be looking down though, cause I wanna make sure, okay? <laughs> I'm hitting the marks. Um, and if you guys want any more in-depth information on any of the things I'm going to be talking about, definitely leave me some comments in the comment section below and I'd be glad to address them. And of course, add a little legal twist on it whenever I can. So first things first, I think as we all are probably assuming is 2022 is the rise of the creator economy. And that's not a term that I've coined. I've been hearing it all over the internet streets from other educators and experts in this industry. So I kind of love it. Like creator economy, I kind of love it. Um, but essentially, I think a lot of the focus is going to be on creators. Like we are reigning supreme. I think it's going to be more questions as far as what do we need? What do we desire? The use of creators, I believe, is going to increase, which leads me to projection number one, which is there's going to be an increase in brands, companies, corporations, everybody, their desire to tap into the influencer marketing industry. Like I think more companies, if they haven't already, they will definitely be tapping into the influencer marketing space, utilizing content creators, utilizing people that are experts in this industry to promote their products, services, advertising, even just your traditional creation of content where maybe they're not posting on their social media platforms, they're creating marketing and advertising resources and content and social media posts for the company in itself. So I think if companies, if you're a brand or you're a company out there and you haven't tried out influencer marketing, it's time to have a sit down with your executive team, your management team or yourself and try to see if you can fit in a budget for that because you will see a huge return on your investment on your investment when researched correctly and understanding the industry and utilizing the right creators for your products and services. So I'm excited. I think everybody's gonna tap into it. If you haven't yet, go. what are you waiting for? Because I will say, every creator is different. Some creators are great for conversion depending on the product. That same creator could be good or bad depending on the product, right? Also, some creators bring great brand awareness. If you are a new brand, then maybe you're like, you know, I just need to get my foot in the door. What creator really matches my brand aesthetic or my brand's needs so then they can bring awareness to their current audience that they've already curated? Oh, I also do want to add that this is in no certain order. I'm just talking about it. I literally just brainstormed these ideas and I was like, we're going to talk about it. But this is no certain order as far as the project projections and predictions. This is just kind of like where I think the industry is going in 2022. So we just talked about how brands and companies that haven't tapped into the industry are definitely going to do so or tap into it further, which leads me into projection number two, prioritizing long-term partnerships or ongoing collaborations, more of like the ambassador type of vibe where the creator is still getting paid, but they kind of become almost the face of a brand. Like I believe influencers are almost competing with like the models, celebrities, and this is not to say influencers are celebrities, but to a certain extent, you can definitely climb the ladder and become one depending on how large your audience is, what your niche is, what type of expertise and education you're bringing to the table and all of those things, but that's another topic for another day. But I do believe brands are starting to understand the importance of a long-term partnership 
one for the creator it's a benefit for us because we have a better idea of how much money we're going to make every month <laughs> and as anyone that is in the entrepreneurial space or a creative space or freelancing space you understand how months can go up and months can go down so it's really nice to be a part of long-term partnerships all i was considered when i'm working with a brand three months or more that is more of a long-term partnership or generally just ongoing month to month however the case may be it's a blessing and shout out to the brands that I love y'all, I see y'all. <laughs> but another benefit for creators is that our audience starts to connect us to that brand, which is kind of a benefit for the, for the brand as well because people need to see things over and over and over. I believe in marketing, they say like uh, a viewer or a customer needs to see something seven times before then they finally purchase. I think it's something like that, Chad. Don't, don't quote me, okay. But I know people generally need to see something over and over multiple times before they finally invest unless they're just like, I'm about to go ahead and do it. Myself, y'all, let me tell you, I'll have something in my cart for months and finally purchase if I'm still thinking about it, <laughs> especially if it's an investment. So just keep that in mind, brand and creator, that it is a benefit for the both of you to work together over and over and over again, because nine out of 10, the audience is going to get more excited about getting to know the brands and the products and the connection and the relationship and building that deeper bond. So then your audience is like, oh, I know that's XYZ brand, I'm definitely purchasing because we know more about the brand, we know more about the founder, we know more about the creator and how it all works together. You see what I'm saying? I hope that makes sense. So I think that's definitely gonna happen more in 2022. For number three, let me take some tea because child, this is the one, okay? Y'all, this is more of a prayer than a projection, no. <laughs> Seriously, but I think, I hope, I project more creators Y'all, more creators are going to accurately mm, monetize their platforms by saying no a little bit more frequently to free and gifting products. I said it. I think creators are starting to, one, research the industry more, reach out to other creators, and be more in tune with the details and the ways that we can get paid and how much we should get paid, right? So for example, like I talk about how you can leverage contract terms in order to get more money. I think there's going to be more resources and educating out there about how much you really should be charging these brands for things such as usage rights, licensing, all of the things that back in the day, listen, I've been on YouTube since 2014 and nobody's getting paid, okay? Or I wasn't. And then now it's like people have full blown careers. So, I think creators are about to start being like, listen, this is my rate and that's what it is and putting our foot down, which I think is so important because not to say gifting and free is, is, is invaluable at a certain time and doesn't have a place in the industry, but a lot of times it's just the brands be trying to hold us back from our coins that we deserve. Knowing that if they were to get a studio, a photographer, a videographer, um, a model, lighting, all of the things, those will be a lot more expensive than getting a creator and also adding on the fact that the creator has a specific, engaged, curated audience. I think 2022, creator's about to get to the bag, okay? Let me tell you. It's 22, where the money reside, where the money reside. <laughs> where the money reside. But I also think in response to this, that brands and companies are going to heighten their affiliate programs, which I'm not against affiliate programs. There's a benefit and there's a time and a place for that as well in the industry. But I do think in response for brands that aren't able to maybe pay that flat rate fee, they're going to offer a higher percentage in commissions for their affiliate programs and or create affiliate programs if they don't already have one. So number four kind of goes with number two, now that I think about it, y'all again, I made this list Okay, so number four is I think there's going to be more in-house creators versus traditional production happening in 2022. Again, like I kind of just stated about the studio and getting the models and the videographer, photographer and all the things that you need when you have an amazing launch and a campaign launch and curated content for your email list and for your website. I think companies are about to start using influencers and creators for that called and I'm just saying in-house creators kind of like companies have in-house counsel for lawyers like I think there's going to be more in-house creators which also kind of leads into that long-term partnership and that ambassador type vibe but here I think creators can get a little bit more money okay it's like I am your basically your production manager or like your 
in-house creator I think is a better term so I think there's going to be more of that which I love and I also think not only the benefit is a little bit more affordable for the brand I'm not saying it's cheap I'm saying it's more affordable just to clear it up um but also their audience is going to see their face on your on the website and you still get that kind of engaged audience at audience aspect even if that creator isn't posting on their social platform because if I see one of my favorite creators and I'm scrolling on a website I'm like oh I'm definitely about to purchase this because my girl is slaying or my girl is a representation of this this company so and I trust her the creator so therefore I now have a sense of a trust with the company so let me just say this is tea for both the brand and the creator but y'all know I'm team creator but I'm not against helping the brands as well because I think educating the brands and companies that we work with helps us in the long run. So I hope that was helpful. Number five projection is, I think there's going to be a heavy emphasis on data or data driven partnerships, which already has kind of started, I would say, because brands and businesses and companies are really trying to curate their strategy when it comes to return on investment in influencers and creators. So I think a lot of brands are starting to see, okay, when I work with this specific creator with this type of following and this type of niche like the more details and data that they get on that creator they're able to say okay we know we'll potentially sell a hundred products and or we'll get 500 every 500 clicks clicks to that link we get 50 sales and those type of things I don't think this is a negative I think this is a benefit and also us as creators I think it's time for us to really dig into our analytics and not be scared of them as we all know everyone brands creators all alike that it just goes up and down. That's just the social media streets. Like sometimes our audience is feeling us. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes we get a, a go viral and then other times it's kind of just pacing and cruising. But as long as the quality of our content, that's really where we should focus. But it's okay to also go in those analytics and don't beat ourselves up about it and be honest with the brand. A lot of collaborations for creators that have worked with brands, y'all know when they ask for analytics and let's just say it doesn't perform as well, we get a little hesitant or nervous. But honestly, we could just be upfront. Hey, you know what? This was a low week, but the content, I still think the quality was amazing. I got some amazing comments. I had 20 different people say how much they love the product and they were going to purchase. I know usually we have 100 people, but I still think those 20 people were so valuable. Let's talk about another partnership where we can kind of intertwine some of the comments that I got from my fellow audience in order to get a bigger growth the next time I post. So, you know, something like that. So then that brand understands, you know what, this was a low month or this was kind of off analytics because us as creators, we're so understanding of what's going on in the back end. We're able to communicate that. And then also it comes with understanding from both sides that, hey, sometimes the creator, you're like, I thought you were going to do this on the return on investment, but sometimes it's just not the case. So I definitely think there's going to be more emphasis on that, but more so so that we all can understand how the industry works, because at the end of the day, this is still super new. Like this industry is so so new okay it's, it's very new compared to other things that have been established over the decades so i do think this is a good thing let me know in the comment section below what do you guys think about the first five projections let me take a sip before we get into the next five okay so are y'all ready for the next five projections okay so scroll down my little notes so my fifth projection is that video content will continue to reign supreme, which is probably not a surprise to most of us in this industry. I personally love video content, which is why my first platform was YouTube. I love not only creating, but also consuming video content, which pro tip for creators out there, wherever you consume the most content, it's probably where you should create, okay? So that's not to say you can't create on other platforms, but I noticed that the platform that I tend to consume the most, I enjoy creating the most as well. But video content, if you're not into it, go ahead, exercise your video muscles, okay? Because it's not going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> Number six, my sixth projection is authenticity over aesthetics. Now listen, I love the aesthetic girls like the next one, okay? I love a good aesthetic moment. I try to incorporate a little bit more of that in my content if you guys haven't noticed on my Instagram as well as here on my YouTube channel. But I think 2022 is giving a lot more authenticity, like just spur of the moment content. Not saying it's not planned out, but just more of that like, I'd say like, 2012 2011 instagram kind of post vibe if you guys were around that time i'm 28 by the way so 
I'm a millennial, definitely am. But I think with the era of TikTok still booming and thriving, people love just the authentic content. Like the, hey y'all, it's Kimberly with a K, just popping on here to say what's good, what's popping, what's going on, you know, versus the like, I don't know what that was, but y'all get it. The aesthetics versus authenticity. I think there's going to be more organic, authentic content versus like the curated aesthetic. Not saying that there won't be both because I'm still giving the girls the aesthetics. Okay, that's the goal. I love a good aesthetic moment, but I think a good combination. People want to really understand the personality and get to know the person behind the creator, if that makes sense. Like uh, not saying that people are being fake or anything like that. I think some people are, but people invest in people and people love a good vulnerable moment to connect that's not to say it has to be a negative thing it can be a positive vulnerable moment so just throwing that out there so don't be afraid to share a little something okay be a little bit vulnerable with your audience but also keep your boundaries okay you don't want to tell all your little beanies it's not for the internet go to your real life real people in your real life okay don't forget them <laughs> Number seven, we saw quite a bit, I'd say 2020, 2021, like that transition, like the end of 2020 into 2021, which is that there will be more influencers becoming business owners. Yes, ma'am. I love to see it. Multiple streams of income. With that will be more product launches and services coming from influencers and embracing their expertise, maybe leaning on their degrees, things like that. I just really see influencers really navigating the business industry not just being a content creator and creating digital content online but also maybe coming out with courses or ebooks all of the things okay i really see i see it there's already so many creators doing it whether it's coming out with a skincare line or like a fashion line or even a collection within a, another company's fashion line it's just i see it and i'm glad to see it okay i love to see it because listen if these brands won't pay us We'll get paid ourselves okay period especially because we've taken the time to curate the audience we know our audience better than anyone just saying throw it out there so we've been thinking about it if somebody's watching this and you've been thinking like you know what i really have this product idea listen get, get to sketching it sis get to sketching it bro start planning it out and take your time to really figure out what's the best way for you to navigate being a business owner in whatever industry you decide to kind of curate your business to number eight wait did I do the numbers out of order? Child, I think I did. The next one, I think this is number nine because I only have one more. Number nine is one of my favorites, of course. I project in 2022 that there will be an emphasis on understanding contracts in this industry as well as more legality things, more legal things put in place as far as guidelines, regulations, laws. And, and let me just say this, it's gonna take some time because the legal industry is so far behind child, I don't even know if they know who TikTok is, okay, at this point. But I do think there's going to be an emphasis on understanding just more to the industry versus just the content creation portion of it, but also the contracts, the laws, the regulations, the guidelines, the copyrights, the trademarks, all of those things that seem intimidating, but they don't have to be, they do not have to be. And also kind of piggybacking off of the influencers because business owners starting to understand like you need a business entity as a creator even if you aren't launching a product or a service you need to understand how taxes work as an entrepreneur and as a creator and all of those things I do think there's going to be more of that and I am fingers crossed hoping that I will be able to help kind of navigate that industry as I think I've been trying to do and bridge that gap between law and the creative space and be a resource for my fellow creators as well as the industry in general. So I'm excited to really lean into this in 2022 myself. I will be doing a ton of research, more videos on this content, more maybe even blog posts, just really navigating this space, doing more speaking opportunities. I've done a ton in 2021, which I was so excited. I'm actually doing another CLE for those non-lawyers out there. CLEs are continuing learning education credits that we're required to have as licensed attorneys. So I'm excited to be speaking on yet another CLE for my fellow lawyers out there. And anyone can actually tune in. So stay tuned to my platform so you guys can get information about that. But I'm just really excited to see the industry elevate and grow and also laws start to catch up a little bit. It's going to take a while, but I'm here to help you guys. So if you ever have any questions, comments, or concerns about your contract, about the legalese of the industry, about just getting an expert's opinion about the influence and marketing industry, I would love to help. I will leave information down in the description box below where you guys can check out my services and chit chat with me so I can 
help you out. So last but certainly not least. Now this one, I've been doing research on myself. I'm not completely up to date and well versed in this yet, but I'm in the works. But I think there'll be a lot more discussion about the metaverse, NFTs, crypto, and how all that intertwines with the influencer marketing industry, whether brands can pay through different things, Bitcoin, like I mean, I think it's about to be a big thing um, in 2022 and beyond, especially with metaverse. If you don't know what metaverse is, Facebook is now meta. Facebook is still Facebook the app, but Meta is like LLC company. Like that's the company now. The corporation is now Meta instead of Facebook. Anyway, but the Metaverse is essentially like this digital space that will act as if it's in real life, but in real life digitally, which let me know if y'all want my opinion on that. Okay, that could be a whole other video. Um, from a lawyer's perspective, I'll just say like, for example, like I've seen like that Nike is registering for a trademark for Metaverse. So does that mean trademarks in real life? aren't applicable in metaverse child i could do a whole video on that but metaverse nfts crypto bitcoin lots more digital it's going to be interesting um over the next few years um but i think in 2022 it's going to be even more discussion about it but i can do a whole video on that so let me know if you guys want to see that and let me know your opinions on the projections that i've made if any of these you kind of align with or if you have any additional projections i have a few more now that i'm like really thinking about it as i do this video but i think that's quite enough for this video. But thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up this video if you did enjoy it. Share this video with your family and friends. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And make sure you click that notification bell so you are notified every single time I upload a video. You don't want to miss out. I'll be doing more legal tea sit down creator chat type videos in 2022. Honestly... I just want to enjoy this platform and create the content that I want. You can guarantee a weekly vlog on Sundays. But aside from that, I'm going to be doing more videos like this to kind of talk about my expertise and predictions and projections and assumptions and expectations in the influencer marketing industry as a lawyer and creator. I love working with brands that align with my brand and that I know my audience will love and that I love myself. But I also love and nerd out <laughs> on the legal tea and the legalities of this industry. So I'm just really excited to lean more into that and not be afraid. Imposter syndrome, I don't know her and I'm tired of her and we don't with her, okay? <laughs> oh, I always end my vlogs with an affirmation. So for those of you that don't know, I always end my videos. It used to only be vlogs, but now I'm ending all my videos with an affirmation. That'll be my nice little touch to see if you make it to the end. So if you did make it this far in the video, comment below this affirmation. I confidently step towards new things. Mm, I thought that was fitting for a projection video because there's a lot of new things I think that are coming, some new, some old, into 2022. So I'm gonna run that affirmation back one time for the one time. Comment below this affirmation if you made it this far in the video. I confidently step towards new things. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next one.